It's a big day for President Trump. He says he's ready to deliver the American people a great big Christmas present in the form of tax cuts. So who really does get a Christmas gift this year from the president? Well, he actually gets a big one himself. It's a great political win for him, but it's also a benefit for him personally. I mean, we don't have his tax returns, but we do know that the top rate for the richest Americans, the tax rate they pay, is going to fall from 39.6 to 37 percent, so that helps. Also, he's a real estate guy. He's a real estate developer, and there's a special part of this bill that's an extra benefit for real estate developers to lower their taxes specifically. But he's not the only one who's smiling right now. Corporations are getting the biggest tax cut in American history, from 35% down to 21%. Another big winner from this plan is anybody who has money in the stock market. About half of Americans do. Stocks have already been rising in anticipation of this plan going through. Paul Ryan is also a big winner. He's been dreaming about the day where he could deliver Americans the largest tax reform since 1986, and this week he did it. Small businesses also get a pretty sizable tax cut. They'll be able to take a 20% reduction on their tax bill. Republicans like to talk about how the American people are the biggest winner from this plan. So let's dig into that a little bit further. Next year, 80% of Americans will get a tax cut. Another 15%, their taxes will be about the same. It's only 5% of the country that will actually see a tax hike. And the average benefit for a middle class family earning between fifty and seventy thousand dollars will be around a thousand bucks. Some will be more, some will be less. Check out the calculator on WashingtonPost.com to calculate your family situation. So why is there so much criticism of this bill? The big problem is in 2027, about half of America will see a tax hike. Another 25 percent will pay about the same, and only a quarter of Americans will get that tax cut, and most of those will be the wealthiest people in the nation. The reason is all the individual rate cuts, they expire after 2025. So what's not changing in this bill? At the end of the day, the student loan deduction is still in there. So is the graduate tuition waiver and the medical expense deduction for folks who have excessively large medical expenses. The 401k and your retirement plan, that's not changing either. So who loses from this bill? Politically, some would say the Democrats. The bill was pretty unpopular in polls, yet they weren't able to stop it. There's also one interesting loser on the Republican side, at least you could argue that, and that's Senator Bob Corker from Tennessee. He was the one senator who voted against the bill when it first came up in the Senate. He said he was really concerned about the debt and what this would do to future generations. But then he switched his vote at the end, leading to people on Twitter to call him crooked corker or say that he switched his vote because of a corker kickback, he would also benefit from that real estate provision. He says that's not why he changed his vote and the public is very skeptical. That 5% of Americans who will see a tax increase next year, most of those people live in places like New York City and San Francisco. That's because they take a large state and local tax deduction and this bill caps that deduction at $10,000. Some other people who don't do so well in this bill, folks who are divorced, the alimony payment will no longer be tax deductible, although that doesn't start till 2019. Similarly, the individual mandate, that health care mandate that required all of us to buy health insurance in the United States, that's going away as well. Health insurance premiums are expected to rise, some people won't want to buy insurance anymore, but other people will be forced off the plan because they can't afford anymore. And by 2027, 13 million people will have dropped insurance. So you could argue those people are going to be pretty big losers in this plan. And the big concern is this plan raises the debt. It adds at least a trillion dollars, some say that may be higher, to our national debt, which is already pretty sizable. At some point, somebody's got to pay that bill. Some people also say the poor will lose. They won't have to pay more taxes or any taxes at all going forward, but a lot of those folks are not going to get any additional benefit from this plan. And also, people are concerned that Republicans, after passing this tax bill in 2018, the next big battle is probably going to be over what to do about Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and welfare. Paul Ryan is already talking about, and so is the President, wanting to scale back some of those welfare benefits. If that happens, the poor would be worse off.